home. Allow me to introduce our guest speaker today, our very own Judy Jones, professional dancer, choreographer, and licensed unity teacher. Come on, Judy, let's give a pop on your You know, recently I talked at uh, uh, Unity at Lynchburg, and I thought, oh, it would be so much more easy to do it at my home church. I'm telling you, I'm glad I got support goes on. <laughs> holding me up here. <laughs> My talk today is called Put God First. And uh, my theory is if you put God first, you know God will lead you. Begin with your awakening in the morning. Emmett Fox, a renowned spiritual leader and contemporary of Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, the co-founders of Unity, suggests training your mind to awaken with a Bible verse or an affirmation. For me, I uh, train my brain to say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord. So I wake up and I have that going for me. By starting your day with a scripture or a positive affirmation, you set yourself up. You've got your day ready to go. Reading daily word and meditating also serve to keep you in tune with God. But how many of us wait until we're desperate to, to pray? That reminds me of the story. There was this gentleman, Mr. Taylor, and he owned a, a dry goods store in New Jersey. This was back in the 40s. And uh, things weren't going so well for him. So he tried to get a loan from the bank. The bank wouldn't give him a loan. He, he went to his friends. They turned him down. So in desperation, he began praying the first time he, you know, as he went into his uh, business. And that day, things went better. So, the next day, he decided to pray again before he started his business. And he noticed again, things went better. So he developed this pattern. And some days, you know how we get busy and we start doing our busyness. If he forgot to pray, he noticed that things didn't go so well. So he realized that praying and giving thanks at the end of the day set up his day. Well, he did so well, the, Mr. Taylor opened a second store, and he trained all of his workers to also start with prayer and end with thanksgiving. He did so well that he said, I am really going to go out on, on a limb. And he opened up a store, Mr. Taylor opened up this store in New York City, and he decided to rename his store. And he named it Lord and Taylor. <laughs> and there is no Mr. Lord. Now, some of you young people might not even know about the store Lord and Taylor, but it's a very nice store in New York City. And I guess in other places now. So we know that today is the day the Lord has made, and we rejoice and give thanks in it. Now, another way that I have found to help me to stay in tune with God is to bless my money. Now, money is not a bad thing. It's just something we use as an exchange. It's how you decide to feel about it. So by blessing your money before you leave your home, you and then when you give it to uh, a clerk, you're blessing them. And try to remember to put in God we trust, that side up so that you're always giving a blessing. And bless your bills. Because, think about it. You get water to your home, you get electricity. Do you pay in advance? No, someone has trusted you enough to give you these services. So bless them. Bless those bills. And also, uh, Remember that 
uh, everything in life really started out as fruit. For instance, this shirt I had on was made out of cotton. Now that seed of cotton was free, but it took a human being to put it in the earth. It took a human being to water it, to nurture it, to let it grow. It took a human being to pick that cotton, took a human being to make it into cloth, took a human being to make a pattern, and to, then to sell the, the blouse or the shirt. So what are we really paying for? We're really paying for labor. We're paying human beings all the time. So that's another reason to bless your bills, bless your money, and bless what you wear. So, speaking of bills, though, that reminds me of a story. <laughs> there were these two bills were coming out of the U.S. Mint. They were coming down a conveyor belt, and they were in different trades. And one was a one-dollar bill, and he looked up over the edge and he sees this twenty-dollar bill. And he says, "Oh, hi there. My name is George." What's yours? And the $20 bill says, well, I'm Andrew Jackson, but you can call me Andy. And so they could have you down the conveyor belt and say, hi, how would you like your suit? So I said, I like that shade of green. It's nice and crisp. And at the end, they separate. And George says, have a good life, Andy. And Andy said, yeah, you too, George. And off they go. 20 years later, they are in a cash register. And here's Curious George again. He looks up over the edge and says, Oh, Andy, it's you! Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Remember, we came out of the mint at the same time. And the $20 bill says, Yeah, well, hi, George. And the $1 bill says, Well, Andy, how has your life been? And the $20 bill says, I have had a terrific life. I've been to baseball games. I've been to uh, football games. I've been to... London. I even saw plays in London. I've seen every show on Broadway. I have had a terrific life. How about you, George? Church, church, church. <laughs> <laughs> now, as we go into talking about money, the biggest and most rewarding blessing, I think, of God's money is to give back to God at least 10% of what we receive. And this is called tithing. And tithing means a tenth. And I don't know why 10 is magical, but it is. And the only thing I can tell you is to start trying it. From Malachi 3.10, bring the full tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to the test. This is one time we can test God. Says the Lord of hosts. Well, he didn't say that. I'm saying it. <laughs> if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you an overflowing blessing, God promises us an overflowing blessing. Actually, giving 10% is really just training wheels for giving, just giving. But it does make you, ex or make me, exercise my faith faculty. If I really have faith that God will supply, then I think that as a, I was taught it was a spiritual law to give back 10%. And from Proverbs through, uh, chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, honor the Lord with your wealth and then with the first fruits of your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. During biblical times, it was an agricultural community and the first crops were given to the priests to, uh, for maintenance of the temple. Now today, bringing our first fruits would be to give first and then do your bills. And just trust that things will work out. Now, if you're, if you're heavily in debt, it may take some time, but it will work out. 
then, uh, speaking of tithing, though, I'd like to share a story, a personal story. This is, I call this the sunflower <coughs> of the sun group. As uh, Marguerite so graciously uh, mentioned that I, I was a choreographer, I still am a choreographer, but I was a dancer. And my husband has, is a musician. In fact, he used to be the musician here. He was the pianist and had the choir and everything. He's now on to other adventures, and because we have wonderful Dale and Linda, I mean, we're so blessed here. And Jessica singing for us. But anyway, we used to do, uh, my husband has written children's operas, and um, we go into a school system, and after five days, the children put on an opera. And he has other song books. And um, at the time we started our work, we were living in um, Charleston, off of the Ashley River. And it was a small townhouse, and we had a deck of, uh, off the bedroom, and underneath it was the patio. And we had talked about the glass doors of pushing these, having these glass doors put out so that the ceiling of the deck would become the ceiling of the sunroom. And it, I thought it was rather small, it was only going to be 7 by 11, but okay. So we con contacted a builder and he said that he could do it for $4,500. And so we said, well, how much do we have to put down? And he said, 10%. So we gave him the $450 and we were off to do one of our operas in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. We did our work and then I came home, my husband went on to Omaha because he was also lecturing there. And I came home and uh, on our message machine there were several calls from an advertising agency, McCann Erickson Advertising Agency in New York City wanting to speak to my husband. I mean, there were several messages, and then, anyway, when my husband finally came home, he called up, and they said, uh, we need to apologize to you because we have used one of your songs, Sunflower, uh, at the World Series, as commercial for the World Series. And uh, so, Okay, well, uh, would you accept our offer? Well, uh, well, I'll tell you how much it was, $4,500. <laughs> and we said, well, we would like to do that, but we found out that in this commercial, there was a young girl, five years old, and during the filming of the commercial, she was nervous, and so the uh, director had said, sing a song, honey. And so she chose the song Sunflower that she had learned at her Montessori school. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, we found out that one of the reasons her parents had her doing a, any work is that uh, the, her father had been let go from work and they needed money to send her back to school. So we called up and asked McCann Erickson, couldn't you make a donation? To, for the, to the school and to earmark uh, young Mary, and they did. They sent $500 extra. But my point here is that we can always trust that God will supply. So our sunflower song gave us a sunroom in our home. <laughs> now, uh, Another story that I have about tithing is uh, there were these three men and they went out boating together up near Bath Bay and, and the water stopped rough and unfortunately their boat capsized but they were good swimmers and they made it to a little island up there and Jim and Tom were busy trying to find brush to burn somehow to get help to come and save them because it was out in the middle of the ocean. And uh, 
Charlie was just laying back on the rocks, just sunning, taking it easy. And they went to him and they said, Charlie, aren't you going to help us? We've got to get help here. There's nothing to eat. This is a rock that we're on. Nothing. We've got to get help. And he said, <clears throat> guys, I have been very fortunate in my life. And I make over a hundred thousand dollars a week, and I tithe to my church. I'm pretty sure my minister's going to come and find me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's <laughs> thank you for. <laughs> so let's uh, read you. Start your day with an affirmation. Just memorize it so that you don't get into your busyness. You're putting God first. Try to remember during the day to uplift the world. Maybe around noon or at 11 o'clock at Unity Village, they say the Lord's Prayer. So that you put the world at hopefully at peace with all that's going on, or at least your own heart is at peace. Then end your day with gratitude. So we, open, we use the key to open the door with prayer, and we end it by closing the door with prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Mother God, you have blessed us all so much with a beautiful world. We have flowers to smell. We have ears to hear the sound of the ocean, to hear the birds singing. We have hands to touch pets, to feel that soft fur. We have the sense of smell to enjoy roses and the fragrance of different cooking. And we are grateful for the food that is presented to us. We are truly grateful. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from error. For this we pray in the name and the power of our way sure, Jesus the Christ. And so it is. Amen. Amen.